At Granger, we're for the ones who specialize in saving the day and for the ones who've mastered the art of keeping business moving. We offer industrial grade supplies for every industry with same day pickup and next day delivery on most orders, all backed by real people ready to help. So you can get the right answers and products right when you need them. Call, click Granger.com or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. With the Lucky Land slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandslots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hey all, welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. I'm your host, pharmacist Eric Christensen. Thank you so much for listening today. Go check out reallifepharmacology.com. Get your free 31-page PDF on the top 200 drugs. Great review for you. If you're taking pharmacology classes, looking to take a board exam soon, uh, or just want a little refresher if you're out in clinical practice. So again, absolutely get that for free. Simply an email is all it's going to cost you. So uh, with that, let's get into the drug of the day today, and that is Romelteon. Brand name of this medication is Rosarum, and this medication is primarily used for sleep. It's classified as a hypnotic and it works as a melatonin receptor agonist, okay? And so there are some differences with melatonin receptors. This drug primarily works on melatonin 1 and melatonin 2 receptors. Melatonin 1 uh, is believed to be most responsible for uh, inducing sleepiness and having that uh, sedative-type feeling. Melatonin 2 is thought to be more responsible for uh, circadian rhythms uh, in involving and in relation to sleep. With that said, Romelteon primarily works on the melatonin 1 receptor. So it, uh, I believe it's like 6 to 8 times more potent at the melatonin 1 receptor. So that explains the effects that you're likely to get. Melatonin 1, as I mentioned, uh, we get that induction of sleepiness, the sedative type feeling. And as you can imagine, because it does that action, it's going to be used primarily for sleep onset versus sleep maintenance. So Romeltian, primarily for sleep onset. Uh, I do have an interesting uh, table or a good table on um, the Z drugs. So that's like Zolpidem. So if you Google search uh, Z drug comparison chart at meded101.com, uh, I go through all the different uh, Z drugs there, like Zolpidem, and, and obviously designate which ones are sleep onset versus sleep maintenance or both and that type of thing. So a uh, good little chart there, extra uh, added bonus if you want to go uh, Google search that and check that out. All right, getting back to kind of Romelteon here. Um, again, primarily useful for sleep onset, not going to be used for maintenance. Dosing of this medication, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Eight milligrams once daily. Uh, as far as uh, cost, historically, this has been an issue with this medication. And in my opinion, probably is one of the big things that limit its use. Uh, compared to, let's say, trazodone, which is very, very dirt cheap, at least at this time. Uh, another thing to think about, it's like, you know, our patient's going to take over-the-counter melatonin instead, which I've done a podcast on um, melatonin previously as well. So uh, cost definitely can be significant higher uh, than some of those other agents in, in most situations. Adverse effect profile, any med we're using for sleep, pay attention to the sedation. Uh, particularly in, in geriatric patients, uh, we may see that sedation linger a little bit, where maybe that half-life uh, gets extended a little bit more so than in a younger patient. Uh, so keep an eye out for that morning sedation, 
particularly if you've got a patient that's going to get up and go driving somewhere or do something um, where they uh, certainly shouldn't be uh, sedated or lethargic. Uh, other adverse effects, probably not incredibly common, um, GI upset, uh, maybe worsening uh, insomnia in rare cases has been reported, dizziness. Uh, one thing I, I know I hit on fairly hard uh, in the melatonin podcast was uh, the rare potential for elevations in prolactin. Um, so again, probably not going to be real common at usual standard doses that we use of, of rosarum uh, or melatonin, but as we uh, potentially escalate and maybe um, use excessive doses that are inappropriate, uh, this may be more of an issue there. Uh, has been reports of reduced testosterone as well. Uh, the rare reports that are associated with Z drugs like Zolpidem, uh, so behavioral changes, uh, aggression, hallucination, also unusual sleep behaviors have been reported with Rosarum. Again, I probably don't maybe see these as much uh, simply due to the fact that uh, Rameltion is used much, much less frequently uh, than a drug like Ambien, for example. But uh, there have been uh, reports associated with that. Some of the pharmacokinetics, uh, important things to note here. Again, Rameltion is going to be used for sleep onset. Primary reason being it's going to work quickly. Uh, this is also important because Rosarum can be used as needed as well. So 30-minute onset of action, obviously we're going to take that medication and hopefully start feeling its effects uh, fairly quickly. Uh, dosed right at bedtime, we don't want to dose it at like 6 p.m. and then try to fall asleep at 8 or 9 o'clock. Uh, patients are probably going to be pretty sleepy sooner than that because, again, uh, it's beneficial for that sleep onset. A little clinical quirk with administration. So Rameltion, if it's given with a uh, meal with food that's high in fat, this could delay the absorption of the drug. So obviously that could lead to kind of a prolonged um, peak where that, that peak is a little bit delayed and then potentially could lead to a kind of a greater area under the curve, basically more exposure to the drug uh, over time as well. And in theory, uh, for instance, in my geriatric patients that I r routinely see, uh, that could linger a little bit longer if you give it uh, with a high-fat meal um, into the, the late morning there potentially. One last thing that really differentiates it from uh, drugs like Zolpidem and the other Z drugs, uh, Rameltion is not a controlled substance. So this could be uh, certainly a potential advantage in that situation, uh, comparing it um, to a drug with abuse potential or with more abuse potential uh, like Zolpidem. All right, let's take a quick break from our sponsor and we'll wrap up with drug interactions. If you're in the market for any pharmacist board certification study material like ambulatory care, geriatrics, pharmacotherapy, or the NAPLEX exam, go check out meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. In addition, if you're a nurse, we've got the MedEd 101 Guide to Nursing Pharmacology. We've got books on drug-food interactions, drug-drug interactions in primary care, and many, many other resources. So uh, go support the sponsor, meded101.com slash store. Your purchases there go directly to help support this podcast. All right, wrapping up with drug interactions. There is some significant things to pay attention to with Rameltion. So first and foremost, uh, multiple enzymes uh, break this drug down. So generally, uh, the way I think of that is you're probably not going to have a drug interaction that's crazy significant. We may have an exception or two here. As far as the SIP enzyme goes, if it's broken down by multiple different SIP enzymes. However, you may have multiple drugs that could impact it slightly and, and raise concentrations. So 
Uh, first and foremost, primary enzyme to pay attention to with Ramelteon is CYP1A2. And we don't really have a lot, a lot of strong CYP1A2 inhibitors. Probably the biggest exception to that is uh, fluvoxamine, which is Luvox. So that's the SSRI uh, with a ton of drug interactions that you really don't see used very often. I've covered that one in the podcast previously. Um, but fluvoxamine has a ton of drug interactions, and uh, Remelteon is certainly one of those here. So fluvoxamine being a CYP1A2 inhibitor, a strong one particularly, um, could raise concentration significantly of Remelteon. And it's probably the most significant SIP interaction that we're going to uh, encounter here. One other drug I wanted to mention that is a CYP1A2 inhibitor is ciprofloxacin. Definitely a common agent used to manage infections like urinary tract infections. Um, It's more of a probably mild to moderate type of CYP1A2 inhibitor. So how much those concentrations of vermeltian go up um, may or may not be significant, kind of depending upon uh, how much drug we're using, and then obviously uh, patient characteristics there as well. But there definitely is potential uh, that Remelteon concentrations and obviously uh, the actions of the drug uh, could increase. Other drug interactions to pay attention to, uh, additive, sedative properties. I think that's kind of a no-brainer. I've covered it numerous times. Uh, opioids, benzodiazepines, alcohol, older anticholinergics, any drug that's going to be sedating um, could obviously potentially add to uh, the effects of Remelteon. And then other probably less significant CYP interactions than CYP1A2, uh, CYP3A4 and CYP2C9 also play a role in breaking down Remelteon. Again, when you distribute kind of the breaking down of the drug between multiple enzymes, the likelihood that, you know, CYP3A4 inhibitor used by itself without any other inhibitors uh, on board, is it going to play that significant of a role clinically? Probably not. Um, but I think it it does bear mentioning. And particularly in patients where we're, we're dealing with polypharmacy situations, if you've got somebody that's on let's say ciprofloxacin, you know, kind of a moderate CYP1A2 inhibitor, and then they're also on a CYP3A4 inhibitor and a CYP2C9 inhibitor, well, that's certainly a situation where concentrations could go up significantly where we're uh, essentially blocking, uh, at least partially, all those pathways from breaking down this drug. So uh, certainly you want to take the patient's totality of medications into account when you're looking at this, but um, in an isolated box, a CYP3A4 inhibitor, at least a you know mild to moderate one, is it going to have that much effect clinically? Uh, probably not. Um, but with that said, you know classic CYP3A4 inhibitors, um, some of the azole antifungals like ketoconazole, uh, lopinavir, ritonavir, nifazidone, uh, drugs not used terribly often, but um, something to, to pay attention to anyway. Uh, and then clarithromycin is kind of another example, too, that I, I do see uh, periodically. And then finishing this up, um, obviously, if you've got inducers as well, that's got the potential to lower Remelteon concentrations. Again, probably not going to worry about it too much in clinical practice. Um, and then those CYP2C9 inhibitors, uh, the main one that I pay attention to or remember Uh, typically is uh, fluconazole. And uh, one other one is is Bactrim potentially, uh, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. That can have some CYP2C9 uh, inhibitory type activity as well. So again, with that inhibitory activity, you could in theory um, slightly increase the uh, Remelteon concentrations. All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap up the podcast for today. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, found it helpful, please leave a rating review on iTunes or wherever you're listening. Also support the sponsor, meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. All purchases there go directly to support this podcast. Uh, If you want that free PDF, uh, it's kind of a no-brainer. Simply an email will get you access to that. 
Go do that at reallifepharmacology.com. Uh, also, I'm releasing soon uh, some nursing pharmacology questions on reallifepharmacology.com. They're going to be absolutely free for anyone to take advantage of. So um, pay attention to the, the blog. And obviously, if you're on the email list, uh, I'm going to let you know when those are wrapped up and ready to go. Uh, any comments, suggestions, uh, you can reach out to me, mededucation101 at gmail.com or uh, connect with me on LinkedIn, Eric Christensen, PharmD, BCPS, BCGP. Thanks so much for listening, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. For the ones who get it done, the most important part is the one you need now, and the best partner is the one who can deliver. That's why millions of maintenance and repair pros trust Granger, because we have professional-grade supplies for every industry, even hard-to-find products, and we have same-day pickup and next-day delivery on most orders. But most importantly, we have an unwavering commitment to help keep you up and running. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino-style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day, lo. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW group. Void prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus.